a move on, and I have my next guest who I want to welcome in, is I have, and I'm going to call him Chef, but he's also the owner, so he's one of those chef owners. I'm going to bring in Ben Hoyt from the Salted Slate up on the east side. Ben, are you over there? I'm here. Yeah, a, couple of, Whoa. a couple of things to get over here. Oh my god, that right there makes me want to That's eat it right now. That's the new Cine Minis. The new Cine Mini. Oh, look at this. <laughs> See, this is why I reward Molly, because she's always so <laughs> amazingly helpful. So Molly always walks away with something. Sometimes a couple of somethings. Whoa. All right. All right. So we're bringing doing a here. cocktail. We're doing a cocktail. We're doing sparkling. We're doing a little room right there. Food. Doing everything. Oh my gosh. This is I'm all right. Uber works. Hey, hey, I'm only, I gotta go to there cheering. I gotta go I events all night. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm all right. Look at this. This is amazing. Oh. Chef Ben, Salted Slate. How are you? Also the owner. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Thank you, you for coming. Yeah, for sure. So I have to say, from a cocktail perspective, I gotta give a big call out to your shout out to your bartender, Rach. Rach. Rachel. Yes. Rachel, you were amazing yesterday. Thank you very much for taking care Which of me. Always. She was fantastic, and we were talking about drinks. She educated me on a new Chardonnay that I had not had, which was wonderful yep. that I tried yesterday. Is that a broadside? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. But so first of all, let, let's let's before we get into the whole brunch aspect, this is just unbelievable. Look at. Let's talk about this. So these are a couple. Is, these are a couple of things. So the, this is new. We've been floating this over the past couple of weeks. Um, we we floated it on Easter. Uh, they're mini cinnamon buns. You get a crock of them. Uh, there's four of them in there. It's for the table. Oh Normally we do a, a, a whopping donut business um, where we sell them by the each or by the bag. Um, now are the donuts mini two or are they? No, donuts size? are standard size. Okay, yeah, donuts are standard size, but they're a dollar in each. Uh, there as well as our biscuits. These this is four dollars for the. I for can the make crust. this half my breakfast right here. You could. It's a lot. It's amazing. It's a lot. Yeah, definitely. It looks tasty. I think I'm stealing that later on, so that, that won't go to any of these guys. <laughs> Unbelievable! That just looks fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, so this this is actually uh, my a permutation of my wife's cousin's recipe. Right, you got to get a credit. So he gave, he gave you a credit there, Kelly. <laughs> thank you. What do we have here? So this is the Brooklyn Deli. Um, Brooklyn Deli. It's the Brooklyn Deli. So we do a rye bread. We make a rye bread, okay. um, and then we've got uh, basically a, a half sour slaw underneath it. So we do cabbage, and then we do cucumbers um, to to invoke that um, you know the the delicatessen uh, pickle kind okay. of thing going on. Uh, we have a house uh, mustard, uh, a whole grain mustard with horseradish in it. Um, and then we do our pastrami. Uh, we do a, a beef tongue pastrami. Uh, so that's, and that's something I don't want to digress on yet, but I do want to make sure I come back to talk to you about. That's kind of the uniqueness of, of self that's one of, Yeah, that's our, that's our big focus. Our big fo focus is buying whole animals right. um, from local farmers. Um, so I noticed when I was there yesterday, it's kind of like a, an area where some of this was stored, like a yes. refrigeration area for yep. it. So can I ask, because this is one of the questions, and I, and I, I know we, you and I briefly touched on it, but salted slate. Salted slate. Where did the name come from? So the name comes from the two things that we that we use there. Okay, to, it's talking and popping to, at the same time. This is my kind I'm of guy. Right? Um, so because we cure everything in-house, um, salt is a primary importance to us. Okay. Um, the slate, we serve things on slate where they're, they're inherited. Uh, you know, when I took over the space, I, I bought everything. There. Okay. Um, so, this, so the slate things came with it. So uh, these are two very fundamental, very rudimentary um, elements okay. that take things to another level, physically with the slate plates, right. and then um, chemically with the salt. With the salt. There you go. So now, here we so go. Now, every, every, every one knows. We, we actually have training on this with the weight set. Do you really? That's awesome. Because that people is, ask it all the time. I was going to say, because I got asked like four times, right? When, as soon as everybody announced that I was coming you in, I got asked like four times, what does the salted slate well, mean? The, what names that we were kicking around, like my wife and I would just sit up at night and just write lists of names, lists of names. And, Bone and slate was a very that was a finalist. We could, you're serving things on China. You could have some fun so, with that name. So, if you're crazy, <laughs> if you're crazy, and the kids aren't. Right. And, and I know we got some other. We have some big fans of yours here as well. Both Molly and or Molly, Kate, and Josh have all been over there. I love your place. So, yes. I know that we got some good fans Kate, there. Kate and Josh are very good, very good guests. So we covered these two, and before yes. we get into more of the the menu and the brunch, what, what do we have here? So this, this, is this, this, is, this is our breakfast tagine. Uh, this, is, this is new. This is uh, probably within the last four or five weeks onto the menu. Um, so it's a North African dish. Uh, okay. Shakshuka is from North, Afri North Africa, um, Egypt, um, Tunisia, places like that. Um, and you basically have eggs that are cooked in this rich broth. That's um, what I'm smelling is the broth. Yeah, so we use, uh, it's heavily spiced um, with our Berber spice blend. We make a bunch of different spice blends at the restaurant to use okay. things. Um, so we have tomatoes and peppers and um, onions and garlic and then these spices in there. And, 
and and then uh, we put spinach that has a lot of herbs, a lot of cilantro, a lot of scallion, uh, a lot of parsley Beautiful. in there, um, olive oil, and then we serve it with lemon, and then we have um, a chili. Um, this is poblano and Anaheim um, chili, like a piece too. Okay. Um, it would if you were in the Middle East, it would it would be called zug. Um, zug. Yeah. So okay. it's a it's a condiment. Um, it's it's pretty spicy. We kind of dial back the heat a little bit. Um, now this is new. This is brand new to the. This is uh, yeah, f probably five weeks, um, okay. a month and a half. Fantastic. Yeah. So I, I mean, and not that you can smell this, but I got to tell you, I'm getting the peppers and the garlic right away, and it just oh, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> All right. So I want to just go back just a little bit. To, I mean, we got the definition of the name, which is fantastic. I want to talk a little bit about what it is, and we, we had this conversation prior to you coming in about how you serve, what the method of serving. You talked about the salt playing a big part, uh, slates and everything to it. But you're doing all of this in house. We do all of it in house. It's a it's a very um, it's a it's a very big program. It's a, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of people to do. Right. Um, that eats up just managing the meat room. So the meat room. So now when we talk about the meat room, this isn't just um, I know I guess I talk about sourcing locally and order their meats from. Specific, I think you said too as well. Blackbird Farms on Smithfield. People right? can get stuff there. We we focus on the whole animal. I find the whole animals. That's why I want a can. Yeah. Oh. So so I find that. So this is the I call it the chunky monkey yesterday. I'll probably get sued for that. Um, Rachel quickly corrected me. Um, so this is the funky monkey. This is our, funky monkey. This is one of our brunch. We have a we have a really cool brunch cocktail program um, that the guys work hard on. This is a coffee base. It's got bourbon. It's got um, then we have our, our I hear people going ooh yeah. already in the back. Our <laughs> coffee liqueur. Kate must be back. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a Chantilly cream infused with our coffee liqueur um, that the bartenders make at the, at coffee the restaurant. Liqueur. Yeah. Okay. So, and we're going to go back to that. To back. I know we're going. I know we're going all over the place, but this is a, interesting beyond belief. So we got the cocktail. What did you pour me over here? So this is um, this is a rosé. Uh, this is an Argentinian sparkling Malbec. Sparkling Malbec. Yeah. But still considered the rosé family. This is absolutely. Actually, it's it's rosé. It's not so. Um, this stuff is not kept in contact, the stems and the pips and all that kind of stuff are not kept in contact with the juice for more than a couple of days. So you get this little, it lends it a tiny bit of color. Um, cheers. Cheers. Uh, you get that rich Malbec nose off of it. Oh, that's amazing. Really, really Yeah, good. so it's a Mendoza wine. Um, and I, I know you guys, and I love that people put fresh juices and stuff into their Proseccos yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Save the juice. I'll just take yeah, the wine. Yeah, I need it take the wine yeah. all day long. No. Um, but yeah, so this is this is a big mover on, on the brunch menu. This um, is fantastic, and this is from Argentina. So. This is from Argentina. Yeah. This is absolutely amazing. Okay, nobody's getting this. Just to warn you. So. <laughs> and it's got that. It's got a, a really great mouthfeel. These bubbles are really, really tiny. Well, you get the bubbles, but like you said, this is this is different for me from a rosé perspective because you're getting that milk. I can yeah. literally, I can yes. get that very Yeah, it's a, much, it's a much different palette than, you know, when we think of rosé, a lot of times we think of the south of France. It's got a very, very specific uh, palette to it. This is completely different. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, so I know that it's my fault. Conversation's going on over because we've got so many great things to talk about. Cocktail I'm going to try in a second, but I want to go back to talking about getting the whole animal because yeah. this is a unique process that it's something to educate people about because getting that in as opposed to getting cuts and stuff that are already mm -hmm. prepared, you're doing the work in-house. We do the work in-house and, and one of the reasons we do it um, is that we can control what we put towards the charcuterie program. Okay. I can cut the things specifically. Um, I can cut the things specifically for the center of the plate items. When you get something cut by a slaughterhouse, not everything is going to be cut the way you need it. Like when I, when I get a pig in, um, copa is, is, is a big part of our charcuterie program. Well, depending on where they disassemble the animal, okay. depending on how far into the neck they cut, that's a lot of meat. That I so can it use. could be that you're losing a lot of meat in could, the process. Exactly, well. okay. exactly. So this gives us complete control. We have the space. Um, it also allows us to dry age our steak. Um, when you when you get some, what most people will buy is is a cryovac, um, right. what what would be called a wet aged um, meat product. Um, so the animal gets killed at the slaughterhouse. They cut it up. They put it into a cryovac bag, and then it will sit in the myoglobin. There are you know there are things working right. in that, um, and normally that's about twenty eight days old when you get it. It's a very different thing from a dry aged. 
okay. steak that is sitting exposed to the atmosphere. So how often would you say that you're getting, whether it's cow, pig, uh, how often would you say you're having We get steak? everything at, uh, maybe two and a half, every two and a half weeks. So you're using every bit so of that we animal. Use, like we use in. everything, and we're, we're kind of like coasting on fumes by the time the next sound. Wow. Because <laughs> if you figure, so everything we do for brunch, all our bacon is made in-house. All of our sausage I'm is made in oh, All of our, col our cottage bacon. So we do um, pretty much like a, a Canadian bacon, but we do it out of the shoulder of the pig. Okay. So you have this really lovely marbling in there, and you, you do get a, a fatty so it aspect to it. Cut to it. So it's we, we do it thin. We okay. do it on on the uh, on one of the Benedicts, um, but uh, but it's just a it's it's not as lean as, as Canadian bacon. Canadian bacon is gotcha. usually made from the loin of the animal. So gotcha. this has a little more oomph to it. So let's talk a little bit about, so South, South of Slate, Wayland Square, if you haven't been up there, you're definitely missing out. And that area alone to go up and walk around, enjoy the area is amazing on the east side. Talk a little bit about, I know this is an experience, the restaurant's been there three years, four years? We are just coming up on our, at the end of our third year in July. Okay, so, so three years. So yeah. this location, you're in a, in a great spot up yep. there. Talk a little bit about the atmosphere of the South of Slate. The atmosphere um, is well. We, we try to create, um, you know, something that's comfortable for everyone. Dinner time, we have a lot of, you know, we'll do a lot of jazz uh, on the, you know, on the radio. Uh, brunch is sort of the wild beast that will never be tamed. No, it's brunch every day. Uh, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday Sunday. So we do we right. we do lunch uh, Tuesday through Friday. Right. Uh, brunch is Saturday and Sunday, and then dinner is Tuesday through Sunday. And taming brunch, you're saying, has become. <laughs> Yeah, it's the a, neighborhood it's, spots. Up it's there. great. Yeah, it's it's great, and and you know, thank you for the, it's 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 awesome. Um, it takes a lot of work, um, and it takes uh, the staff. Uh, the staff has to be like on point right. all the time. Your setup is awesome. You got a very comfortable bar the way you're set yep. up. You've got the tables that are higher, kind of call them the higher yep. tables on the near the bar area, and then the dining. So. I was there yesterday, and I, there was calls coming in from Mother's Day. So if you haven't booked yet, you probably we don't. We have one. Thing. I I just started taking a wait list today because we have one table for two left, and and that's it. I'm getting calls now for six people and four people, and I feel terrible. But it's so it's what you got to do is you got to go out with your wife, your mother, whatever this weekend, and then make sure next weekend you go back out there. Right, so let's do it that. Way. All right. So before we end, I've got to ask two other things here. But one, I want to try this cocktail because this is Rachel was talking about the funky the monkey. funky monkey. Yes. Okay, yeah, that'll stay here too. So I'll be putting that back here. That won't be going anywhere. Um, Kate, you're not going to like it, so don't worry about it. I'll take care of it for you. No problem. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so last question for you before I let you go. Yes. I know you brought in some wonderful things here today, but being a chef owner is one of those unique perspectives that does exist. And they're, you know, I talked to some here and brought them in. I have a couple of good friends that are also part of that collaborative there to do that. Yeah. What are some of the things from your perspective that you wouldn't want to see missed or you, you know, it's a must try for people coming into the restaurant? A must try for people coming into the restaurant. I, I think, um, you know, we, we have, we try, to, we try to keep a very interesting menu and, and we try to be very eclectic. I guess I'm having another <laughs> Um one of the one it it, it it completely amazed me. I, I first put octopus on the menu two years ago, so we've done this will be our and, and it's come off and on. Um, the one we have now is our third iteration of it, and it okay. absolutely blows my mind how many people order octopus up here in it's various forms that you prepare. Mind right? numbing. It's mind numbing. We will go through a ten pound octopus in one night. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So. And I'm assuming there's different variations of how you prepare it. You said that this is your third. Yeah, this will this will be the, the the third menu variation that we've done in the in three years. So it's come on the menu and off in, okay. in three different forms. Fantastic. So yeah. The, and then is there so is there anything new coming up? Any news that we should know about new menus, new and events? We, like well, that? one of the things we do with the menu is is we try to take every every couple of weeks we'll take the least selling thing, move it off, okay. and put something new in its in its place. So it allows people to come back, recognize stuff. That's on the menu. So you have an evolving menu. But it also allows us to kind of stay interested. It's a it's a pain to do a seasonal <laughs> menu, for, and like no joke, it's horrible right. to flip thirty items or you know when you throw in lunch, when you throw in brunch, and then you throw in dinner. Right. Doing a seasonal Maybe menu for yeah. right. So it's like so it's easier to do uh, to do a one dish every couple of weeks. Gotcha. And just try to keep things. So that's something, though, to, to make sure people out there. Because, I mean, honestly, realize. So it's really an evolving menu. It is. Every yeah, week it's evolving, but there's probably off. always, there's always something that somebody can come back and recognize. Um, and one of the things we like to, you know, one of the things, 
that we're afforded is is that brunch has to be like welcome. It has to be. You can't go out for brunch Absolutely. and have something crazy on a plate. People, you're, it's morning. It's the first thing exactly. you're doing. You probably haven't. You're half woken up. <laughs> yeah. So yep. we need to have something comforting there. Um, dinner, we can be a lot more adventurous with. Um, and like we were talking the other day, lunch is a mix between the two. It's, it's tried and true standards that people know they can come in and, and get out in a half an hour um, and also have something maybe new that, that they'd like to try. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Definitely. You brought in thank some fantastic things. I really sure. appreciate you taking the time. Salted Slate, you'll see Chef Ben over there. Thank you. That's an amazing spot. So I, I am going to keep some of this you know, okay. because if I let it all go out there, it's going to get stolen <laughs> and then I won't ever see it again. So I'm going to put that behind there. Cool. Okay. Awesome.